Hello guys and welcome back to my channel the BI Masters. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the Fabric Skew Estimator or Fabric Skew Calculator. I might you know mess up on the word sometimes a little bit here and there, but it's called the Fabric Skew Estimator. This is really a cool feature that Microsoft has released on the Microsoft Fabric pricing page and it helps you to identify or predict a skew based on the kind of capacity requirements that you have. So whether you have a workload, whether you want to do Power BI, whether you want to do databases, this estimator is going to be very helpful for you to choose what kind of SKUs are required for your organization. This is also helpful for the developers if they really want to understand how SKUs are calculated. And before I show you how that works, how that looks like, if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, watch this video to the end and give me a thumbs up button if you like the video. Also, I recently did a video on Microsoft Data Agents, which is also a cool feature with Microsoft Fabric. If you have not seen that, watch the video. I've pinned the link in the description to the video and also on this one as well. So watch that video and also give me feedback on that. And now without any further delays, let's deep dive right in. Now let's talk about Microsoft Fabric SKU Estimator and how it really works. So what happens is in the SKU Estimator, there are a few set of questions that Microsoft will ask you, mostly in terms of data information. It will ask you in questions in terms of the fabric usage, how you're going to use fabric. And when you select specific workloads, there are additional questions that might arise during this process. So the very first question that Microsoft will ask you is what is the data? So what is the total size of data that you are bringing into Fabric? What is the batch cycles that you want to perform? What are the total number of tables that are coming across all these data sources? So this is the key question that you need to answer when you're estimating the Fabric, uh, estimating the SKU. The, there are certain workloads. It is completely a choice on to you when you're initially starting. So you can choose a specific workload that you want to select. When you're working with Microsoft Fabric. So here are, I've divided the workloads into two different sets. One is your standard workloads and the second uh, the second workload is the more advanced section where you want to do real-time intelligence and so on. So starting with the very first workload, you have the data factory, Spark Jobs, Data Warehouse, Ad Hoc, SQL Analytics, Data Science and Power BI. So data factory is where you, do, where you are looking at data factory operations. This includes your data pipelines, copy jobs, Apache Airflow jobs and so on. Here, the first question arises is, you know, what is the total number of hours of daily data flow Gen 2 operations that are being used? Just to put it into context, data flow Gen 2 works similar to Power Query and it consumes a lot of lot of capacity units. That's why it becomes expensive. So if you are not going to use data flow Gen 2, I would recommend, you know, you unselect data factory. Because when you're selecting the Spark jobs, you can do a notebook and data pipeline within the Spark job itself because Spark jobs are the combination of multiple activities that you process together. So you can select a Spark job. If you want to use a data warehouse, such so for meta-driven orchestration, you know, you go and select a data warehouse. One of the key questions that comes out when you select a data warehouse is, you know, use Fabric Migrate Experience. The moment you select this, it will switch you to a Azure dedicated SQL pool, Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool, wherein this billing is charged outside Fabric. The benefit of this is where you it will enable you you're doing faster queries. But traditional Microsoft data like the Fabric Data Warehouse works seamlessly. So it is a choice up to you whether you want to have a dedicated SQL pool outside Fabric to maintain it or not. Then the next question is around ad hoc SQL analytics. This is where you have if you for suppose you have developers working in your in your organization and you want to want them to query the databases. This is where the SQL endpoint will be leveraged. And you will have to provide the number of analytical users that will be using the SQL pool or the, sorry, the, the SQL endpoints. Further to that, we have the data science where a couple of questions comes on top of it. Where the number of data scientists are going to access the data, the number of data models that are going to be executed every day. So you can provide the information around that. In regards to Power BI, you have the number of Power BI users who are going to consume the data. You have the number of Power BI creators or developers who are going to create the reports for you. And there's an optional question of what, what do you estimate your size of the model is going to be. So you really don't have to fail if you really don't know the option about you know the size of your models. And for Power BI Embedded, you have the daily Power BI Embedded report viewers that are going to consume if you are if you are embedding your report outside the organization or to a third party application. The second set of workload is more in terms of event streams. So for before we go into event stream, what event streams are, they are basically real-time events that you can directly bring into Fabric without writing any code. So you can do IoT events, you can do, you know, Apache Kafka uh, 
is the is the set. basically temperature is one of the examples that you can work across so a good example for that is you get the data from event hub transform it and put it to a fabric lake so that is the event stream so event stream is where you know uh, you need to there are certain questions around what is a daily event ingestion so i have given a good example of for example you have 100 sensors working on iot you have one event which is one second per sensor is giving the output so that you have around 8 million data coming in from the sensors which goes around 8.46 gb this is the number of data that is getting ingested every day so similar to that now number of event streams you are going to deploy you can have batch batches as well and you can also add the number of destinations it can be a lake house fabric act activator custom endpoint and so on and it also tries to understand what is a total event source connector so these are the four questions that comes when you enable the event stream you have the event lake event house this is the place where you are going to store the event so there are a couple of questions in terms of you know what is the daily delimited data that's going in so it's basically nothing but you know the event stream data that that stores into the uh, event event house the second question is very important in terms of hot data days so this is the number of days that you want the, the fabric cache so hot days is very important because you know data from cache is retrieved faster so you can specify you know the the number of hot days the number of retention days that you need to be you need to retain data in fabric by default fabric retains the data for 1000 years but it is essential that you know if you have if you don't want any continuous data or the data is becoming uninteresting you can just you know take the data out the duty cycle hours, hours is where you will specify the number of hours in a day that event house is going to perform and on the right hand side i have given a simple example of caching then the last of last one you have is you know the data activator in the workload workload set to which is your alerting mechanism so from the event house event streams you know if you want to set any alerts so that will get ingested into the data activator so that is one of the first questions the number of activities or events that you want to process in the activator and what are the kind of alert rules are you going to send so for example i can if any user is changed i want to send an alert of any un unethical you know accesses then it sends alerts so these are the number of alerts that i can send across including emails as well if the campaign has hit any threshold if you're looking at digital marketing those alerts can be sent out that will say clear your data activator area then you have the workloads basically one of the workload is your fabric sql database now if you you are looking at a standard sql database which can be you know provisioned or a serverless platform fabric database is a serverless database so there are a couple of questions they'll ask you more in terms of number of v cores that you want then what is the total size of the data that your database is going to save and the active hours during business operations that you know you want to keep the database active for so all these questions from these workloads will contribute to your estimation that fabric will provide you few things that i want to highlight specifically when you are working with the fabric estimator is ensure that you know you rightly estimate the workloads that you are going to use in fabric even though it's perceptional i, I know that but still think around it what is what is really needed because fabric has a capacity to scale so you can start small and expand each fabric capacity that you have you need to understand the skews so each fabric capacity is offered in skew units which where, where one f unit is equal to one v core compute so higher the so one of the key things to understand higher the cores better the concurrency better faster processing it should not be that you are going through f16 and you are running 100 pipelines so then the bursting will be will, will happen and it will it will you know slow down your processes so key things that you need to look at is you know ingestion pipelines whether you're going to use notebook and PySpark, are you going to query your warehouse are you going to leverage Power BI Direct Lake because Direct Lake also consumes compute from your fabric and whether you are going to do LLM or machine learning on top of it. The other key factors you want to look at is if you have a light development, you know, you can go for F2 to F4. If you are mid-tier standard BI in ingestion, you can go to F6 and F32. And if you want to look at large users, large data sets, then you can go to F64 to F128. This is purely my assumption, what I am trying to think around it and so on. Nothing specific to uh, my, what microsoft recommends this is just what my experience is what i say this is what you can do and with this i'll quickly show you the demo of how microsoft fabric or uh, the skew estimator looks like in the pricing area so here i am in the microsoft fabric pricing page where you have the skew estimator now in the preview and is available for everyone and you can see the same information i had showed in my presentation 
so what we can do is we can quickly go with estimate we'll go with the standard estimate first where i'm looking at the data on if i'm a power bi heavy uh, company i want to move to fabric i even i'm looking at around 50 to 60 gb of data i have around 10 batch cycles and i have 100 tables which i'm going to work across i will not choose data factory spark jobs anything like that i will just say power bi and i don't want event stream nothing like that so here i will have a question around I have 100 users on Power BI, I have 10 individuals creating report and Power BI, I say, I'm not sure about it. I can quickly go and calculate. So it should basically give me the estimation. I'll click on calculate once again. And now see, it says I just need a F4. I don't want to go F64 or anything any more than that. I can just go with, you know, 102 GB of data and, you know, Power BI Pro users, 110 and so on. So this would be very beneficial for me. To understand how fabric you know estimator works like now i can reset it again and i say i go to a mid-size customer i'm looking at around 200 gb of data or i would say 300 gb of data and i'm having around 40 batch operations that i'm working across i have around 300 tables that i'm working across in the organization I am going to leverage spark jobs i want a data warehouse or meta orchestration i want to do sql analytics I don't want to do data science as of now. I want to do Power BI. And that's it. Now, here, Spark Jobs, there's nothing. I would say I have around 20 SQL guys who want to do data engineering on top of it. And I would I have around 150 users or I would say 200 users and 25 developers. And I know that my roughly my model size is 0 0.5, 500 MB of models. And I click on calculate. So it should be 0 and 1. So I would say 1 GB of data model, for example. And I click on calculate. Now if I scroll up, it gives me you have, you need to have F128 as operation here. Because here we are looking, giving it a data model as well. So if I say 0 data models, I don't know the size, and I calculate, it still gives me the same size. Because now here I am having a lot of users that are going to consume. Uh, to be more on the specific side, I go to a large data set, large, large customer where I want to do data science as well. I want to do event stream for real-time ingestion. I want to send alerts. And I also want to do a SQL database. Now, I will say I have around 50 developers in my team. I have around 1000 users. And I have a team of around 70 to 80 developers. I don't know the model size because I'm not aware. I have around 15 to 20 data scientists. I'm running across around 50 training models every day. For events, if I'm looking at around 8 GB of ingestion every day, across, across, you know, 10 event streams. I'm putting it across data lake house, warehouse, and I would say a third, third party point as well, endpoint. So I say three data destinations, and I'm looking at around three to five connectors. So I say four connectors. Same, a data ingestion is 8. Hot data days, I want to, I would, would like to keep the data for in my event for around 15 days only. Retention is around 365 days. And my data events are going to, real time is going to work only for 1 hour a day. And for the activator, number of ingested events, I can put in 10 events and I'm setting around 15 rules. And I want to use a database as well. I would like to say I want to have a 4 core database with 100 GB data and it is going to be 8 hours a day. Now I click on calculate. Now it gives me F512. So this is how estimation works within Microsoft Fabric. It will give you the distribution of how things are going to be consumed. But you will also look at the unused. So this is unused 35%. So this is where the scale up, scale down because the fabric automatically understands we are on the maximum capacity and you know you can scale up scale down according to your process and this is how you can use a SKU estimator in a more effective way depending upon your needs and please understand this is just you know a predictive side of it there is nothing concrete that you have to buy this buy this SKU you can also lower down and you know then scale up accordingly and that's it on the the fabric SKU estimator live that we are working upon. Well guys, that's it from today's video. 
and if you really like this video if you gain some information on the fabric skew estimator feel free to let me know hit the thumbs up button you know also share this video with your fellow developers and let me know with any more videos that you want me to do till then thank you so much guys have a nice day cheers